Hello, everybody. Good to see you guys. Uh, welcome back to uh, welcome back. A lot of you all here. Let me just get a quick. Um, can you guys see me and can you guys hear me? OK, can I get a thumbs up from one of you uh, wonderful people out there watching? Hello from Tennessee. Christine. Good. Ginger. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, Stella. Hey, you guys. Happy to hang out with you all again. Uh, it's been about, well, it's been two weeks. And um, yeah, I'm Joseph Perlman, and I recognize a lot of you guys here. And we are going to talk about how to launch a dream career at any age with a lot less effort than you guys think. So happy to hang out with you guys and be back. First of all, I hope you guys are all happy, healthy, taking good care of yourselves, spreading love and, um, and enjoying yourselves. So just want to just want to have a quick check in and, and say, I hope you guys are doing well. Hey there. Hey, show. Good to see you from New York. I work with show every week. Uh, all sorts of wonderful folks. And I'm going to be doing some Q&A at the end. So hang in there and we'll do some live Q&A in the chat. And um, yeah, you guys, I am Joseph Perlman. And I want to thank Backstage again for creating this series and for inviting me to speak with you guys. Um, those of you, some of you know, I've been collaborating with Backstage for many years and all of my archi ar articles are archived and available to read on Backstage. So thank you Backstage for everything that you guys do to support the acting community all over the world. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, we help actors at my studio, we help them launch their careers faster and reach Oscar potential on set. And at my studio, PAA, we believe, and I personally believe that you can launch your careers faster and with less effort when you're lit up with fun. And I also believe, and some of you may know this, that you can do a lot of other things in life when you're lit up with fun, when you're under the influence of a lot of fun. However you find it, when you're lit up with fun, you can do most anything faster. And we have online Zoom classes from Hollywood to anywhere in the world for beginners to celebrity level actors. Um, and you guys are invited, if you haven't already, to attend a free audit from anywhere in the world, from your living room, from your bathtub, from vacation, and come and watch the actors at the studio. We have one class now, uh, a PAA Asia class. We have classes um, for US. We have classes all over the world, but we have over 30 celebrity actors now in one class and also major writer, director, producers, network executives uh, in the class developing work with the actors. So come and be a part of the work and watch. And, uh, and they're small groups of celebrity and series lead level actors and also beginning actors. And we're working, I'm coaching these actors on currently casting major film and TV roles to make the fun, brave, dangerous choices to go into an audition room, virtual, in person, or on tape, and guarantee a win, and also on set as well, to reach award level performances on set. So to do a free audit, just go to our website, www.josephperlman.com, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com, fill out the contact form and we'll get you set up with a free audit. And, um, and let's dive in. How to launch a dream career at any age with less effort. How to launch your dream career at any age. And I've been talking about this for a while, so I'm especially excited to do this. And it's good, we're giving some time for some folks to come on in right now and for me to have some water. And we're gonna hunker down for a fun Q&A a little bit later, and I'm looking forward to that as well. So sit back, relax, and I want you guys to know, one, it's totally possible to launch your career faster at any age and with less effort. Again, when you're lit up with fun, when you're ignited with fun, that is that it, it factor. That is that, you know, that, that special thing. You can't take your eyes off of somebody because they're so ignited, ignited on, ignited with what? Ignited with fun. Age, I'm gonna say this right now, age is never a limitation to an actor wanting to launch a high level acting career, period. 
Over the years, I've helped actors who are well into their 80s book roles in major film and TV. And depending on the time of year, there are more opportunities for actors who are 40 or above, 40s, 50s, 60s, there are more opportunities for actors 40 and above than there are for younger actors. Um, so it's, it's not an obstacle. Your age is never an obstacle. Anything capable of being done, you can do. Let's do some review. Some of you guys have been uh, watching the videos that I've been doing with Backstage for a while now. <clears throat> and I want to get back to basics with some stuff. Anything capable of being done, you can do. I've had a good 35,000 foot view on this industry for a while. And that is definitely, definitely true. And also, one of the greatest bits of advice I ever received um, was this. What is for you will not go by you. What is for you will not go by you, but it's never going to just drop into your lap. It's your responsibility to reach out and grab it and take a bite out of it, to grab it, to seize that opportunity. Um, does that make sense? So I think what I want to do is I want to empower everybody watching, wherever you guys are, and thank you again for hanging is at no point in anyone's career is a career ever bestowed upon an actor. Does an agent or a manager ever create that acting career? Agents and managers are strategy partners at best. And very few reps know what it really takes to, to execute that high level strategy. It's your responsibility and it always was your responsibility to reach out and grab it no matter what level you're at. Whether you're beginning, whether you're a celebrity level actor, I told you about this wonderful conversation um, some of the actors at my studio had with Matthew McConaughey at one of our bar nights. Uh, they asked him, hey, what gets you up out of bed in the morning? You know, you have an Oscar, you have an amazing career. And he said, I can't tell you how much fun it is to strategize, to lay claim to a particular role or a particular project that I like. He said, I think about staking it, putting a stake in it, staking it and making it my own. So what is for you will not go by you. That doesn't mean it's, your, it's not your responsibility to reach out and grab it. And I find that in many cases, <clears throat> older actors have certain advantages when it comes to starting a career over 40. And I'm talking about 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, all of those ages. Um, the most obvious, okay, some obvious advantages that actors possess um, is that they're more settled, have more wisdom of life experience to bring to the table. They've loved, they've lost, they've raised kids or are currently doing so, and they've made major financial commitments, all while experiencing deep levels of joy and disappointments, okay? So experiencing a greater depth of emotion to make it so that you can live off the interest of that life experience. That's what I'm talking about. When you get a role, one of the cool things that, that high-level actors do is they say, what of that role can I relate and identify with? It's not because I've had that experience, okay? Um, it's because just what experiences um, can I just relate and identify with? They fought battles and won, fought battles and lost. And I'm not saying in any way that younger actors have not had these experiences. experiences. It's just that older actors have had more. It's a simple fact of life. They're able to bring a more multicolored richness to the table. And older actors often have better interpersonal skills, which can be valuable on set, developed from years of nurturing fami families or working in offices. And one could argue that there's also a smaller pool of competition in the over 40 age group. It's common knowledge that not all the young actors that move out here stay in the business. The over 40 group of actors is inherently smaller because the business um, is intense. It can be tough. And many young actors end up pushing the dream to the back burner in the name of starting a family, going off to pursue goals that seem more accessible, like um, law school, real estate, nursing school, starting a business. And let me tell you something, starting a family is just about the most awesome thing that you can do in this life. Um, I, you, you can't imagine what it's like if you don't have one. And if you do have one, you totally get it. 
Um, and I do have one and I have a four year old daughter and it's irreplaceable. It's it, there's, there's nothing more important than that. And you guys know that. That said, the competition can be tough in the over 40 pool. The actors that have stuck with the business have a lot of nice credits and formidable acting chops. They've been acting their asses off for decades and have sunk their hearts into the business, making them truly daunting opponents. But that's no match for you when you are at your Olympic level of the game with regards to your acting. With actors of all ages, it's important to define career. It's really important to define what that means as new media and the industry has changed the game. Older actors who are new to the game have to be feverishly proactive. Maybe there's a better word for older actors. I don't feel old <laughs> um, and I'm over 40, but um, so I don't know if I like that, but let's say actors over 40 um, who are new to the game have to be feverishly proactive, not just in study and developing craft, getting great, reaching your Olympic best, but in actively pitching and building and maintaining relationships with major industry players. Remember, in this industry, things don't work the way they did 30 years ago. Things don't even work the way they did two years ago, okay? In the last three years, so many sweeping changes have happened. It looks like a totally new landscape. So you have to, just like every great endeavor, forget what you knew, okay? Forget what you know to discover what's new. Forget what you know to discover what's new. It's a very powerful concept in acting. Once your work is finished in the acting, to find the truly brilliant choices, you have to forget the original piece, trusting that that work is in you to discover something else, something that nobody else had ever thought of. As Marlon Brando said, find a way to do it that's never been done before. And that applies to your career, you guys. Find a way to do it that's never that's never been done before. And if you're 28 years old, uh, as Megan Wolf is, Megan, thanks for hanging out with us, or you're 16 years old, the same advice that I'm going to be giving you, practicable, actionable advice, is for you too. It's also for you too to think about. So find a way to do it that's never been done before. Your winning best career is not going to look like anybody else's, so reject any one-size-fits-all approach because it's not going to be what's going to get you to that highest level. I gave you guys an amazing exercise some weeks ago, and I want to share it with you again, and it's, and it's just as important for actors over 40 or at any age. I'm talking to you at any age right now. I'm not just talking to actors over 40. I want you to imagine how it would feel to get exactly what you wanted in this career. I want you to imagine exactly what you feel because we want all these things like career, relationship, things, et cetera, but it's kind of like we really want what it's going to feel like. Does that make sense? We really want how we're going to feel when we have it, how awesome and lit up with fun we're going to have, okay? It's possible to feel that now not as a lollipop to replace getting what you want, but to know that feeling that now is how you're going to get that faster. So we're going to work backwards in any way you guys can with the acting and the career. I want you to think from the top down. So it's as if you've already achieved that incredible thing that you want, that series lead on that show, okay? That award, that incredible role in that film uh, that you're going to be shooting for a year, um, in Australia or, or, you know, wherever you can shoot it. And then imagine somebody said, hey, Danny, hey, Jack, hey, Erica, um, how did you get that? How did you get to that point in your career? And you're, you're answering that question from a starting bias that you've already achieved it. Remember, the quote I always talk about, Einstein's quote, you cannot solve a problem in a meaningful way from the same level of consciousness that created it. So you're coming at the career problem from another level of consciousness, the level um, that you've already achieved what you wanted to, and now you're working backwards trying to figure out what were the key steps that got you to that place. And guess what? It's never going to be the obvious stuff. It's never going to be the herd mentality stuff, the casting director workshop stuff. 
It's going to be connected to who you are and why you do what you do. It's going to be connected to your personality. Your personality is nine tenths of your success potential is nine tenths of your performance. Okay. Age or feeling too young or too old should never be a deterrent in preventing you from doing what you want to do in any era, in any arena, personal or professional. It might be more or less of an obstacle given what you want to do, but it should never pose a blockade. Okay. It's not an obstacle. It's not a blockade. How? So how are we going to do this? You guys, I'm so excited to same is true with a Broadway career. Um, Mia, same is true with a Broadway career. I'm going to cover a lot of ground here and then we'll get to hang out and do some question and answer stuff at the end. And um, one, remember, it's really important to not think that your career is going to happen in the way anybody else's career is going to happen. So reject what I call herd mentality ideas. Oh, I don't have any major credits, so I guess I can't compete for a major role, or I'm not SAG AFTRA, so I can't compete for SAG AFTRA, or I have a lot of freckles on my face, so I guess I can't compete for leading roles. That's all false, okay? When you're great, you can do anything, you can compete for anything, you can be anything. So rejecting herd, mentalities ide uh, herd mentality ideas, if you haven't, check out the video I did with Backstage, it's on Backstage's YouTube for free, how to separate industry fact from fiction. How to separate industry fact from fiction. And it's going to clear the table of a whole lot of nonsense and busy work that was never fun to begin with that you never had to do um, to get your career off the ground. So two, stop actively seeking agents and managers. I mean it, you guys, stop looking for representation. The best representation does not want to be sought after. They want to feel like they discovered you. It's like a, a hunt, a discovery, okay? And 99% of agents and managers that you try to find on your own are not going to be effective because they never knew it was their responsibility to pick up a phone and pitch their clients on the telephone in addition to making submissions, et cetera, okay? Um, actors who are submitted and not pitched don't go anywhere. It's like a lottery, okay? And if you get an audition from a submission, it's another lottery that producers are even going to be seen by you. So again, stop looking for representation. Your time is best spent getting great and learning how to pitch yourself and build and maintain relationships with the people who are in a position to actually cast you, production companies. All right. So what we know, okay, it's been a busy year. It's a busy time, even though production's on hold, you guys. Um, we've seen over now 25 actors landing series leads, leading series regulars, major supporting roles this year without even seeing the inside of a casting office, okay? Um, getting into the casting mix miles before it ever gets to casting by building key relationships with the production companies. It's not enough to simply be good, you have to be great, okay? This is the Olympics. It's possible to get great. Your great potential is right there in you. It's, it's how, do we, how do we clear away stuff that's getting in the way? So it's not enough to be good, you have to be great. And ask yourself, are you truly great? You know, And how do you know if you're great? How do you know? Well, you can answer like this, every time I act, it feels such a blast of fun. I feel so lit up, lit up with fun. The acting feels effortless because there's no technique in the final acting. Otherwise, it, the acting reeks of acting technique. So effortless. You're feeling like you have immediate impact in the people that you're speaking with. And it feels like you. It feels like your version of it. Not like you're playing yourself. But remember, your best acting should feel like you, your version of it. Remember, Brando says, find a way to do it that's never been done before. And how are you going to do it? You're going to bring yourself to the role. 90% of the performance is the personality of the actor. Next, you need to understand there are no rules. When you're great, there are no rules. There are no rules of the game. Guess what? There's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. 
Some people call it FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt that spread actor to actor about what I should be doing or can I do this or should I do this? Remember, uh, the story of my friend, client, actor, Catherine DeSev, Montreal-based actor, and phenomenal, phenomenal actor. I showed her how to build relationships with the major writers, directors, producers, casting directors that she wanted to collaborate with. And she said, I've always wanted to be on Handmaid's Tale. And I showed her specifically how to build those key relationships with the production company, with Elizabeth Moss and the production company. And her response after me showing her that was, Joseph, like, this is awesome, but who am I to do this? Who am I to pick up the phone? Who am I to reach out to those people? Well, guess what? After five and a half months of doing that, she booked a major role on Handmaid's Tale that she shot with Elizabeth Moss and, and had, a, had a huge experience on that particular show. Who are you guys to do it? Um, you have a right and responsibility to do it when you're great and know that you can do it. And what we have to figure out, what you have to figure out is how are you going to sell yourself when you pick up the phone and reach out to production, to casting, to writers, to, to directors, okay? How are you going to sell yourself? There's no one size fits all. So if the question is, oh, how do I do it? Well, um, let's see, Mia's way is different than Grant's way, is different than Jasmine's way, is different than Yovan's way. And Yovan, great to see you. Hey there, welcome. Um, so everybody is scared and also realize sometimes, you guys, that if it's casting, it's oftentimes too late to meaningfully compete for roles without a solid pre and post game strategy to stake the role. So how do you launch a career at any age, a dream career at any age? You have to realize that nothing is ever dropped on you. This is a strategy game. Your reps are strategy partners, okay? Your coaches, your teachers should be high-level strategy partners. You should be your best strategy partner. And strategy is threefold. Remember, strategy is building and maintaining relationships with major production miles before it ever gets to casting, okay? Because production offices, guess what, you guys? They're casting up to 100, they're in development for sometimes up to 100 plus projects, anywhere from like 12 to 100 projects. Casting may only be working on one. So your job is to build relationships with these people miles, months, years before it ever gets to a casting process. Um, second level of the strategy is making getting in the room the easy part, getting the opportunity. And when you have a relationship with production, getting in the room is the easy part. You get to compete for the, um, you get to compete for the role, not the audition. You don't wanna to compete to get the audition. You wanna compete for the role. And you wanna be able to deliver the best acting performance you can possibly deliver and to also deliver the best you you can possibly deliver. Remember, when you come into a room virtual, in-person, or on tape. Before you act, there's the interview of you, who you are. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And the third part of the strategy is the post game, is making sure somebody got your tape, using uh, software programs where you can see if the link was open, the email was open, and the link was accessed. Picking up the phone, you or your reps, there's a right way to pick up the phone. Um, to thank them, to make sure they received it, and to see if there's anything else uh, that could be useful. So there's a follow-up game. So, so pre-game, day of, game day, you know, uh, race day, and also post-game. Very, very important. And um, yeah. And just know, in a lot of arenas, production is directly involved in, in um, doing the casting themselves. So it's this big myth that you were never supposed to reach out to those people. When you're great, it's your right and responsibility to do that. Next is this. Part of next level strategy is knowing what you want. What do you want? Know your industry, okay? It's not enough to say, I just want to be on this one show or I like this one. It's, it's irresponsible to do that because there are hundreds, thousands of content out there. It doesn't mean you should be watching all of it. It's one of the most overlooked obstacles 
to launching a high level career, it doesn't matter whether you're an actor, writer, director, or producer, you need to know the content that is out there and be familiar with it. There are no excuses to this. It's really important. And you wanna start with a good like 12 projects. So the question to you right now would be, what are the shows that currently exist that you would like to be a part of in the future? Who are the writer, director, producers that have produced the films that you have loved in the past know that they're now creating maybe up to a hundred projects they have in development and it's going to look a lot like what they created in the past. So who are those people that you want to collaborate with? What are the films? Who are the writers? Who are the directors? Who are the producers? And what are the names of the specific TV projects that are active? And even if your show that you loved is no longer on, well, that producer is probably has another show or another 12 shows in production and one currently in pre-production. So you need to be very clear. It's not enough to just say one, start with about 12 and you can kind of build up from there, all right? And that is really, really important. So know specifically what you want. This was true before, this, listen, there's some things that are different because of the pandemic, but everything I'm talking about has always been the case, okay? Everything I'm talking about is it, it always has been the case. It currently is the case. And, it, and it, this will be how you, how you do it. Um, learn how you're going to sell yourself when you pick up the phone and pitch or your reps pick, pick, up, the, pick up the phone and pitch. Excuse me. I need some water. It's like picked a peck of pickled peppers. It's a, it's a tongue twister. You need to know how you're going to sell yourself when you pick up the phone and your reps need to know how they're going to sell you when they pick up the phone and pitch you. Remember, if someone is not using the phone, it's not happening, okay? Reps that don't understand that it was their responsibility to use the phone are not going to wake up the next morning and realize that they were, oh, that's what I was supposed to be doing, okay? It's your job um, to let those reps know. It's your job to do it on your, to do it on your own. And to start the process of like, what am I going to say when I pick up the phone and pitch myself? Or what am I going to arm my reps with? Because your reps, it's not their responsibility to figure that out. It's yours to deliver to them on a silver platter. You need to do the important work on yourself, okay? Your personality, who you are, is more important, is the most important thing in this process for career and acting. OK, it's 90 percent of what is going to make you successful on a phone, in person and when you're acting. OK, remember, in acting, we're bringing ourselves to the role, not playing ourselves, bringing ourselves, um, getting intoxicated under the influence of emotions that might be foreign to us. Simon Sinek, one of my favorite speakers, Silicon Valley author and speaker, said this, and this is really important for any any age. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. They don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. No one's looking for a story about what you do and what you're good at or some niche or type or, you know, what you want from them. Way more interesting is why you do it. Why do you do what you do? And I want you to start thinking about that and writing it down. Think about it, but think about it out loud. Talk it out loud. Remember, your best solutions to the problem, to problems are going to come from your self-talk. So find a place where you're not afraid to look like an asshole or be a freak and talk it out loud. Why do you do what you do? What gets you up in the morning is another question. What is your why? You know, what is your why? What are your core values? And the other thing too, when you're thinking about picking up the phone and reaching out, is that in the beginning of these conversations, you don't want anything, okay? You need to put your, your need to be liked or your wants aside because people are not going to get a sense of who you are. Think of two animals meeting each other. It's kind of funny. They sniff each other. It's sort of like, you know, think about it with regards to friendship. Think about it with, with regards to, to dating, you know? Someone needs to like you. Someone needs to personally like you and want to hang out with you for six years, before they entertain the prospect of giving you an opportunity, of being your friend, of getting you in for an audition. 
Do you know what I'm saying? Like even the casting directors bring in folks that are great actors and those that they personally like. So it's about making it about them, not about you. And honestly, everything I'm saying is directly related to anything about relationships or dating or, or any human interaction. Don't let your need to be liked get in the way of your best work or showing people who you are. Don't let your need to be liked get in the way of your best work or showing people who you are. And when you stop trying to get something from others and make it about them, you'll find that you naturally have more success and wins in your career. And you'll find that people will more easily be attracted to and gravitate towards you. So stop trying to win, be liked, impressed, land the client account, etc. Stop trying to do it because you cannot please and create at the same time. This is very important. And, and, I, and I want everybody to really hear this. You cannot create and please at the same time. Know this, your job was never in an audition on set when building relationships with major writers, directors, and producers. It was never to please, ever. Remember, our first rule of an audition experience is this. Don't guess what you think they want. Assume you are who they are looking for and bring yourself to the piece with a really fun and brave choice. And why do we not want to guess what they want they don't know what they want. Remember, when the actors, at least the actors that, that we work with at the studio that I personally work with, when they get a win, we get notes from producers that sound like this. Thank you. Please tell the actor, thank you for being the only one willing to take a risk. That was the one reason why we knew we had, had, we had our person. And I could tell the network, Showtime, we didn't need to see any more actors. That was a direct quote from J.J. Abrams about um, Annie Chang, who is a phenomenal actor, producer, um, director, one of our coaches at the studios. And the other thing that producers will say um, when, they, when they really like you and the work is great was, wow, it wasn't at all what we were looking for, it was better, okay? So be brave. This emits a vibe of zero desperation because you're not busy figuring out how to get something from people, but rather enjoying your time with them. One of my friends and, and coaches at the studio, Alex Ashinger, again, producer um, and writer and actor, said, go into these situations, to these industry meetings, whether it's a virtual uh, general meeting, a phone conversation, an audition, hoping to make a couple friends. Does that make sense? Not wanting something from somebody else. So what I'm giving you are some, you know, some mindset shifts, all right? Because remember, it's possible to get from point A to point B in your career instead of like this, climbing a mountain like this to teleport, okay? To not have to climb the rungs of the ladder, as one of my great clients said, but to teleport to that level. And remember what Jason Bateman said, no matter what age you are, actors, you are just one job away from the next big thing in your career. If you're just one job away from something really big happening, take a breath, relax, um, and go into sort of an exploration and an in, sort of a inquiry about who you are. Do you know? So, so you can bring that. You can bring that into the room. All right, good. Three things to establish here. There are three things you want to establish when you put yourself out there, whether it is in any format, in-person, virtual, tape, on set, you want to establish that you're fun to play with, okay? Like I said, people want to know, people want to know what it's going to be like to be around you for six years. Two, you want to be someone that others can personally like and vice versa, you know? Honestly, you guys, sometimes I see actors going into situations where it's like they're under duress, where it's like blatantly toxic, why, it, it, is it more important to get that job? I mean, don't you guys also want to have fun? Didn't you also, weren't you also born to do this because it's a light, because it's fun? Do you know what I'm saying? It's also for you to suss out whether they're going to be fun to play with. One of my favorite um, people in business, Manoj Bargova, Bargova, I think I'm pronouncing it right, said this, and it's, it's really awesome. He said, I eliminate anyone or anything in business that's aggravating. So this is a little tip for you guys. In your career, okay, in your career world, it is okay, permission from me to you to eliminate anyone or anything that is an aggravating force for you. 
because if they're aggravating you to such a degree in the moment, they're going to take up 80% of your headspace after you're, after you're out of that moment, okay? So uh, you can eliminate anyone or anything that is an aggravating force in business. Something beautiful that Annie Chang, again, my friend, one of our coaches at the studio said is, stop apologizing or don't apologize for the space that you take up, okay? Stand up for yourself in the space that you take up. Don't apologize for the space you take up. This holds true, uh, especially in auditions. Don't think just because you're going in for a co-star role that it wasn't your responsibility to make acting choices and to still have an opinion when you walk in that room and when you start acting, okay? A lot of actors think those smaller roles, I'm just supposed to sit back, fade into the background and I hope they'll uh, talk and listen and I hope they'll like the way that I look. That is bullshit, that is not true. It was always your responsibility to treat every scene, whether it's a commercial scene, short scene, a two-liner, a one-liner, a one-pager, and prepared in the same way you would prepare as if you were playing the lead in a Ridley Scott movie. You have to figure out what the structure is that you're going crazy inside, but it was still your responsibility to make choices. So don't let anybody trick you into thinking that just because you're going in for a co-star or a commercial role, you weren't supposed to make all of the brave emotional choices. And so three things to establish before acting, be fun to play with. Two, be someone that others personally like. And three, emit a vibe of zero desperation. You don't want anything from them, okay? And, and again, with the acting, and I've said it in, in other videos, your job is to out danger your competition, is to make more dangerous choices, to out danger, out fun, the other folks competing for the role. Um, and the last thing that I want to say again is please give yourselves a break. Stop trying to figure out how you're going to do your careers or how you're going to play your roles in your head. The toughest problems will never be solved in your head as thoughts. They need to be discovered. Okay. I repeat certain quotes for a reason. Um, I want you to hear them. I want them to be in your subconscious. Stella Adler said, facts, F-A-C-T-S, facts are death to an actor until they are fed through imagination and become experience, okay? So this is really important. When I train actors, when we coach in class and coaching, I want them to have the actual experience as if they went in, not to practice for going in. I want you guys to trigger the experience of actually, I had the experience, and now when you go in, you get to do it again. Does that make sense? Not to repeat it but it pulls the nerves off. Um, I already did it, now I get to do it again. So I wanna dive into you guys, right? I wanna dive into a conversation with you. Um, I, I, I just want you to know that essentially your age is zero obstacle to you having any kind of career, but you need to rethink what career means, okay? You need to stop listening to, you need to reject all this fear-based advice, all this herd mentality advice about, what everybody says I'm supposed to do because your path to getting to where you want to be is going to look very different. And you need to ask yourself, what do you want? Where do you want to go? Who do you want to work with? And then you need to ask yourself, what's working? Where are the dots connecting and what's not working? What's typically not working? Our actors are going out for zero auditions or you're going out for zero high level auditions. And then we need to figure out the you who are you and how are you going to be describing yourself? How are you going to sell yourself when you pick up a phone so that somebody says, wow, we need somebody like you on our team. We would love to continue this conversation. And then you are off and running on this incredible relationship that is going to last your entire career, okay? Where you're checking in with them and you're getting early access to scripts and you're getting into the casting mix before it casts. It all comes down to relationships. 100% of people in this industry are people, just like, just like us. We're all people. Um, and if you approach them as human beings, you have just the same opportunities as an actor at, at any younger age, okay? You are not at a disadvantage because of your age, okay? So let that go. Take that off your plate. That is a, sort of a mind virus. Um, and there are a lot of mind viruses about how the industry works. Um, please come check out one of our classes. It is so exciting right now. Like I said, one of our classes 
We have over 30 celebrity actors in one class and just as many major writer, director, producers, um, agency heads, et cetera. It's very exciting. You guys are invited for free if you haven't to come and watch one of our classes, be a part of that group. Um, go to the website, uh, our website, my website, www.josephperlman.com, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com. Go to contact, send us an email and we'll, we'll, we'll set you up with a free audit and, and hope to hang with you. Hey, how about some questions? Let, let's hang for a little bit here. Um, specific questions that I can help you guys answer. Yeah, let's see here. What do we got? All right. All right. Let's see. Um, good. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, Kia Evans. Thanks for hanging out, Kia. Do you think it would make a difference if you travel to other countries for auditions, kind of like what Millie Bobby Brown did? Again, that's Millie Bobby Brown's journey, and it's not going to be anybody else's journey. And guess what? What's so cool is you're released from the responsibility of having to put yourself in a particular place right now. Um, you have always been able to compete for high level roles from wherever you're at in the world via video submission, through pitches, through emails, et cetera, until you book a role and then you go shoot it. The actor I was telling you about in Montreal, Catherine DeSev, didn't leave Montreal to compete for that role, okay? So I would say the conversation comes to when you book the role, how are you going to safely get yourself to set and safely navigate that? experience and safely navigate yourself back home. So don't worry about it in the beginning. You can, you can launch a high level career from anywhere in the world, um, period. Let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, Brooklyn, cool name. Brooklyn, should your headshot be your everyday look? You know what? Yes, your headshot should be your everyday look. You shouldn't have a headshot that's sort of glammed up or dressed down. Your headshot should match what somebody's going to get when you walk in a room. And it's okay. It's okay if your headshot's a couple of years old, as long as it looks and feels like you. Um, but let's say you have long hair and then you shave your head or vice versa. If it doesn't look like you, it's going to be a bit of a shock and a surprise when you go into a room virtual in person or, or do a tape. Um, and it's not matching the gist of what's on the page. But yes, I think... Think of your headshots in the same way I'm describing everything I am with regards to career in, in acting. Your headshots shouldn't look like a typical headshot. They shouldn't smell like a headshot. It should almost, it could be an editorial shot. It can be a three quarters. It doesn't have to be so cropped in. Um, the headshot should capture that singular thing, that personality. It should, something of you should be popping out of that headshot. Um, and it's more about personality, opinion, attitude than about what you're wearing and the look of it. So, so to answer your question, Brooklyn, yes. Um, and the cowboy, <laughs> that's funny. It's probably not your real name, but it could be your real name. So uh, are self-tapes important for new actors? Yes. You know what's important for new actors? Getting great. Finding a place where you can get to your Olympic best, like really getting great. And then... You need to know how to put together technically a self-tape. And I did a video on that, how to put together a winning self-tape or something like that. It's on backstage. You can look it up. Um, it's on the YouTube. It's about self-tapes. And it'd be worth it to maybe do another one, an addendum to it, a part two, because there's lots of new information that's coming out that's being very useful to putting together winning self-tapes. So yes, you need to know how to do that. But most important is you need to know how to do sort of be at your Olympic best when you put that on tape. Hey, you guys, by the way, thank you for hanging out and, and, and having some uh, spending your afternoon morning um, with me and having this conversation with backstage. All right. Good question. Brandon Wandel, when should you join SAG? This is a really, it's like a really complicated question. You don't have to be SAG to compete for SAG roles. Okay. But you need to understand that you're going to have to be taft Hartley into the union. So you're not going to be working on a SAG project. You're going to have to become SAG ultimately. But to pitch for and compete, you don't have to first be SAG, but you need to let somebody know. You need to not lie and let them know you're non-union, but they can taft Hartley you into the union. I think you should join SAG whenever it makes sense. Don't You don't have to rush to join SAG, okay? It's kind of fun to be a community. I think you should join when you can. Um, it's a bit expensive, um, depending on who you are. And so it's an investment, but
but it is a very exciting community. I'm, I'm a member of SAG. I've been teaching with and for SAG for many years, and it's a really exciting community. It's sort of where we all want to be. So I kind of feel like if you can join SAG, um, do join SAG. If it's possible, don't feel like you have to, okay? It shouldn't be like high priority. If you can, do it um, because it's fun. I mean, you get to, you know, there's lots of free events. You get to you get screeners, you get to vote, um, panels, and all sorts of educational experiences that are really uh, rather high end for the most part. Um, so it's, it's good. Let's see. Uh, hey, this is a good question, Brett Thomas. It could be the subject of a whole other video, but how do you write a resume and stand out as a new actor with no experience? That's a really good point. It's okay that you don't have a lot of experience. What's not okay is that you don't have a resume. Actors without resumes, what that says to industry is that the actor doesn't take themselves seriously. So it doesn't matter what you write on that resume, be honest, but don't think that you don't have any credits. Um, and one of the things that I'll do in the career work with actors when we distill value proposition, okay? It's a brief impact statement that gets a wow from somebody when you deliver it in dialogue. Sometimes we'll write that value proposition, artist statement right on the resume. Here's what you shouldn't have on your resume, you guys. You shouldn't have your personal phone number, your personal email. I'm a big fan of removing height and weight. These are all things that can eliminate you from competition before somebody ever has a chance to see, to meet you or to see you act, okay? Why do you not want your personal phone number, okay? It's a security issue. You don't want people to feel like they can personally reach you. Think of the actors, the performers that you want to be. Would that performer put their most personal contact information on their resume? No. So what you can do is you can create a business email, a Google, um, uh, uh, like, a, like a, a Google phone number. It's oftentimes free um, or Google business email or any type of business email like John at John productions.com or something like that, but make it look business. If you don't have an agent or a manager, don't make it look like it's your personal number. So like I said, you can use another service too. You don't have to use Google, um, but you can have a business number and a business looking email address. And if it's for a commercial shoot, if somebody wants to know your height and your weight on all that, by all means, put it on there but don't put it on there and give somebody a reason to knock you out of contention until it's asked for, okay? So it goes under the category, sometimes it's TMI, too much information on your resume. Your resume should be really simple. Your name, contact information, most important credits. And I often think a little, little hack, a little fun tip is to between your name and between the start of your credits, so the sort of after any contact information in between your credits to actually did buy, uh, and it's really neat. It's just something for somebody's eye to bump over. Okay. And great, Jonah. Uh, hey, Jonah, is it okay to send introduction emails, introducing yourself as an actor to casting directors, directors, producers that you don't know personally asking from England? Hey, this is a really good question. I wanna say the answer is absolutely yes but it might not be the best time spent because emails are very easy to ignore if you haven't first used the phone. You wanna earn the right to send an email with a subject line as per your request, as per our conversation. And if you can earn that right on a telephone, then that email is definitely going to be seen versus just sending an email when nobody knows who you are. Does that make sense? But it's not a bad idea, it can't hurt. It's just, I think you can use your time in a more impactful way by first learning how to pick up a phone and make that call and then send the email. But you're thinking in the right direction, by the way. Um, absolutely the right direction you're thinking in. Let me see if there's some other questions. And um, yeah, let's see. Uh, Ruffy, Tadaro, I'm getting back into acting after teaching, uh, teaching career and raising my family. Hey, congratulations, that is beautiful. All of my film and commercial work is over 25 years old. Should I not list it or use any of that? Nope, you don't have to use it. And guess what? Take a look at my video, um, how to create a celebrity level reel with less effort. It's on backstage. It's a whole other way of delivering real content. The traditional reel is dead in the form it's been in and it has been for many years, okay? Watch that video, Ruffy. I think you'll get a lot out of it. 
You don't want to send material that's not relevant to production, okay? Your reel isn't just some fun thing for your YouTube or your website. Your reel is a high-level strategy tool for pitching to casting directors, writers, directors, and producers, and you want to deliver in the form of a scene or two production-relevant current material just showcasing your acting against a, a, a background similar to what I have here. And you can watch that video and it goes into detail. So enjoy that video, Ruthie. I think you'll get a lot out of it. And congratulations and, and, and welcome back. That's really cool. Um, good. Um, if your screen froze in any part of this video, you can go uh, back and reread the, uh, sorry, rewatch the video anytime. And good. Now you guys, Getting contact information for people that you want to reach out to is extremely easy. You know, we have the internet and no contact takes more than it's usually instantaneous to kind of find that information. But please, I'm, I'm, I'm really telling you, before you pick up the phone and do this, you need to ask yourself, am I at my Olympic best as an actor? Because you're going to get opportunities. And if you're not at your best, you run the risk of closing more doors than you open. So I really beg, implore you to enjoy, have fun the process in the process of getting great, getting to your, your Olympic best as an actor before you do this, okay? Um, it's fun to help my clients make getting in the room the easy part so they can compete for the role, but you need to be honest with yourself. One, do I truly love acting? And two, am I at a level where I can compete um, where I can, you know, really compete with other actors at that level. And I know it's all there. It's right there. You guys have it, but you need to work at it. And you can work in an impact versus effort way. Remember, effort isn't the point. Impact is. Okay? Good. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, no. Does it make a difference? Kia Evans, a couple more questions, and then we'll, um, we'll, we'll enjoy the rest of the day. Do you think it makes a difference by going to a school that specializes in the arts? Um, yes, actually, I think it does. And I don't think it has to be a conservatory. I think you can get your training piecemeal. Um, you can get great vocal training. You can get great acting training. You can get great um, you know, dance training, et cetera. Or you can go to a conservatory. It's just important that the training is really good. It's top notch. It's high level. So. No, going to a conservatory or a four-year program doesn't give you an advantage over actors that get their training piecemeal. It's just important that you devote yourself to the highest level training possible um, so you can feel personally when you're at your Olympic best. Um, and it is really important to do that, big time. Let's see, another question or two. And backstage, and Casey, can't thank you enough for 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 um for helping out with this and 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 moderating this and all that thank you very 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 much i greatly appreciate you um let's see let's see uh christine jeter what is your take on saying no to roles as new actors in the field is it worth saying no to wait for better ones man i so love that question christine you kind of get it permission to say no absolutely Here's the deal. You shouldn't just say yes to every role that comes your way. You should maybe, um, it could be fun to audition if it's a high level audition, you know, watch out for auditions that are sketchy or red flag kind of stuff. Um, but yes, it's important that you say yes to projects where you're working with people, where it's a love, where it's fun to be with them, where you personally like them, um, where it's not a toxic environment, uh, where you're respected, where you're paid for your work and where there's, Zero aggravation. Remember, you guys, that zero aggravation is really important. Sometimes in an audition or interacting with production for the first time, people are showing you all the time what you're going to get with them, okay? So permission from me to you to say no to things that are not in service to the, you know, the great, bright people that you guys are. So you just like say no to stuff that doesn't feel good is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, good. Oh, you guys are so welcome. Thank you. And um, yeah, I mean, listen, Emily, Emily, it's a really good question. How do we know what level you're at in the classes? It is come and watch a class. Uh, it's very easy to sort of for us to suss out what level you're at. It's um, all the class formats are exactly the same. 
Every actor experiences an undeniable breakthrough every class or we don't stop working. Um, you'll be in the right class for you and we'll figure it out when you come through the audit. So feel free to send us an email if you want to. Um, thank you guys for so much fun and such great engagement. Um, it is really a highlight of my week to hang out with you guys. Um, feel free to email me with any topic ideas that you guys want. Uh, I have a lot of really fun ones that, that, you know, um, that I would like to do coming up. And as always, you guys, much, much love. Um, please take great care of yourselves. And um, yeah, and, and really, 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 this is what I want to leave you guys with. Doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter how you do it, what you do, find a way to light yourself up, to ignite yourself with fun. Because anything that you think about or do when you're under the influence of that fun um, is going to be arrived at a lot faster. So basically stay uh, ignited, stay lit up with fun. And it doesn't matter how or what. It could be with music. It could be with a relationship. Um, it could be with fantasy. Whatever it is, spark that light up inside of yourself um, and then you know conquer anything that you guys want to do. Be well. And until next time, you guys, take care.